Amen. So today we're going to talk about something called the blame game. Are you listening to yourself? So James 1.22 says, Don't fool yourself into thinking that you are a listener when you are anything but. Letting the word go in one ear and out the other. Act on what you hear. Those who hear and don't act are like those who glance in the mirror, walk away, and two minutes later have no idea what they are, what they look like. A couple weeks ago, I felt like a guy was talking to me about hearing and listening. My wife and I had a conversation about that. And I was wondering, you know, why I was getting this. But I think it was because I was so stubborn growing up. Um, I didn't listen to my parents. I didn't uh, listen to really anybody. And... Uh, you know, moving fast forward, there's a lot that I had to learn about this. But in this scripture, it was pretty interesting because I was wondering where it says, if you can scroll up just a little bit. It says, don't fool yourself into thinking you are a listener. And then down below, it says, act on what you hear. So there's a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing in the Greek, it's actually a, it's a word that comes from the word Acoustic, like just hearing. So when you walk in or you hear music, it's something that you physically do. But listen, listening is something that you have to, you have to attentively pay attention. And it's actually, it's a verb. It's something that you have to do. It's obey. If you can go ahead and pull up the next scripture, Jeremiah. 25. And I put on here refusing to listen. So hearing, once again, is like physically hearing something, but you can hear something, but if you actually listen, that's something else. That's something you have to do with that listening. So in Jeremiah, it talks about this is the message that Jeremiah the prophet spoke to all the people of Judah and all the people of Jerusalem. I have been a prophet for the past 23 years. For the 13th year that Josiah, son of Ammon, was the king of Judah. And from that time until today, I have spoken messages to you from the Lord again and again. But you have not listened. The Lord has sent his servants, the prophets, to you over and over again, but you have not listened to them. You have not paid attention to any of them. So once again, that the... Uh, the meaning of listening is, again, it's uh, to attentively pay attention and obey. So there's really a difference between hearing and listening. And I was reading the story of uh, Martha and Mary, and something caught my eye on this. If you can pull up uh, Luke 10, 38. My wife and I would have conversations about this, like, well, wasn't Mary, uh, Martha doing the right thing? I mean, she was cooking. She was cooking for the Lord. So the Lord would come into town and stop by his friend's house, which is Martha and Mary and Lazarus' house. And in uh, verse 38, 39, it says, As Jesus and his disciples continued on their journey, they came to a village where a woman welcomed Jesus into her home. Her name was Martha, and she had a sister named Mary. Mary sat down again attentively before the master, absorbing every revelation he shared. So she was listening to him. But Martha became exasperated. Exasperated, exasperated means she was pretty pissed off. She was mad. With finishing the numerous household chores and preparation for her guests, so she, she interrupted Jesus and said, Lord, don't you think it's unfair that my sister let me to do all the work by myself? You should tell her to get up and help me. The Lord answered her, Martha, my beloved Martha, why are you upset and troubled, pulled away on all these distractions? Mary has discovered the one important thing by choosing to sit at my feet. She is undistracted, and I won't take this privilege from her. I looked this uh, scripture up into the uh, com Bible commentary, and it uh, kind of talks a little bit more about what was actually happening. So... Martha was probably like the older, uh, she, was, she was older, and, uh, you know, when a guest comes over, people would naturally just go in and start 
being hospitable, cook for somebody. But the Lord said that Martha was distracted, uh, making herself busy with, no, with, with uh, not so important chores. Again, it says she was exasperated. She was pretty upset. And actually, she came and she was very frustrated. And she actually was trying to tell the Lord what to do, telling Mary to go help her. But the Lord said that, uh, you know, that she was distracted and he was not going to take that away from Mary. And in the, uh, in the Bible commentary, it actually says that Mary was wise. So Mary was doing something right. But I was wondering why, why Martha was so frustrated. And I remember what Pastor always tells us. He said that people who are frustrated have unre unrealistic expectations. And I wondered why Martha had, or what her expe expectations were. You know, she, she was, out, I mean, on the surface, it looked like she was doing the right thing. She was cooking for the Lord and, and um, probably setting things up. She was... Uh, you know, she knew he was a special guest, but at the same time, Mary was sitting there, and they said she was sitting there quietly and just taking it all in from the Lord. So the question is, what was, what was her motive? You know, she was cooking, probably cleaning up, and um, in those days, you know, we might not have had, like, most of the kitchens and uh, dining areas are together, but maybe this area where they were talking, they were somewhere else, and whatever was happening... Martha was probably getting pretty stirred up. These are some of the things that Martha was feeling. She was frustrated. Um, she was obviously envious or bitter. Uh, she was obviously complaining to the Lord. And when you look up inside the uh, commentary, it says she was restless, anxious. She was scattered in her thinking. And this got me thinking you know, a lot of times, pastor says, when, you, when we don't listen or obey, a lot of times we can get stuck. And when I looked at, just kind of started looking more into, looking more into this, it was beginning to make sense. So if you can pull up Proverbs 2. Every young man who listens to me and obeys my instructions will be given wisdom and good sense. That's what he gave Mary. Mary was listening. She was obeying, and uh, the, the, the Bible commentator said that she was wise. Yes, if you, want a, if you want better insight and discernment and are searching for them as you would for lost money or hidden treasure, then wisdom will be given to you in knowledge of God himself. You will soon learn the importance of reverence for the Lord and trusting him. So there was something special that Mary was doing. I don't she must have known something because she quietly sat there and says that she did not say anything. She just listened to him. And the Lord was uh, pretty impressed by it. So the problem is, if you're not listening, you're hearing, but you're not listening and obeying, then what ends up happening? You could possibly get stuck. Um, Pastor has mentioned before that, you know, we can get stuck if we're not obeying and taking care of our business. It's like I was thinking about like a, like a car, when you're driving a car and you're on the road and as you're driving all of a sudden something happens, maybe you get a flat tire, maybe the car starts sputtering and you don't know what's going on and you just pull over to the side of the road and you can't move anymore. But all of a sudden you're thinking, okay, what am I gonna do? Do I call roadside assistance? Um, who's gonna help me here? I need to get to where I'm going. So you might call roadside assistance, they'll come check out your car, and um, I look at that as being like, you know, like the Word of God. The Word of God or pastors, whether it be through uh, the altar or through a band, and they give you the answer. Okay, this is wrong with your car. Um, your battery's low. Um, you have a flat tire. And some of these people, they won't take that advice. They'll just say, you know what? I, I think I'm good. Um, no, it's okay. I think I'll just wait here and, and see if I can get this thing going myself. But a lot of times when people get stuck, they don't want to hear what other people have to say. They want to do what they want to do. And eventually, it's like, it's like that seed. The seed can go two ways. You can either plant a seed, and it can be something that can grow into, you know, can grow the roots. It can be a strong 
um, tree or plant, and it can grow beautiful fruit. On the other hand, this seed can be something like, and turn into like the sycamine tree. We talked about that, which can grow bitter roots. It can cause um, um, just really bad things to happen as you move forward. If, if you're not, if you have any kind of bitterness, jealousy, or any kind of unforgiveness in your heart, um, that seed can go one of two ways. So the problem is, it's something that Martha did when I see it in this story, is that she started to blame others. She blamed Jesus. Why aren't you telling, this, telling my sister to help me? She was blaming him. People who blame are people who are not happy with their outcome and what's going on. She blamed Jesus. So she uh, demanded, and she was very disrespectful to him. I was also thinking about, in the story of uh, Adam, Adam also, he blamed Jesus when uh, he was having uh, trouble. He said, uh, Jesus, that woman you gave me. So when I read, it's about people not taking responsibility. They want to blame other people. They don't want to, they don't want to listen to the word. They don't want to listen to the Lord. Because basically, if you're not receiving what God is saying, whether it be, like, like we said, through pastors, the altar, band, you're basically rejecting God, which is pretty scary. So listening is like faith without works is dead. It's, it's a physical thing that you have to do. You can't just hear it. All of us get to hear it. We're pretty blessed to hear it, but what are we going to do about it? So once again, being stuck is a result of not listening. Again, you start, uh, once you start not listening, it goes into frustration. People start blaming others. They don't want to take the responsibility. And some of these people, they don't, want to, they don't want to change for whatever reason. They don't want to move forward. And because of that, they get frustrated. They start blaming. And eventually, they can even start hating people. If you can pull up this, actually, um, Something kind of interesting, I was thinking about that story um, about the scapegoat. So the scapegoat is in the, in the past when uh, the Israelites would, would have their sins, they would have Aaron bring a goat and they would pray over the goat and, and have all their sins put on this goat. So any, anything that, uh, that you were sinful about, things that you were shameful about, you would put it on this goat and then Aaron would send that goat off into the wilderness and the wilderness at the time was like, there was like, it was really barren. There was like nothing out there but wild animals. And that was really the uh, purpose of that is to send that goat out there to get killed. So unfortunately, I was thinking like, that's kind of what happened with the Lord. You know, he was innocent. He came here to help us, to, to, to love us, to save us. And, you know, they made him the scapegoat. He was a scapegoat. They, they sent him out to get killed, and, and really that whole thing about the scapegoat is really pretty scary, because if I looked up the word scapegoat in the commentary, and I'm just going to pull this up real quick here. So the scapegoat actually means to be deceived in the mind. It means like it's warped thinking. It blames God for others. And it actually says it leaves someone in their own fantasy world. So if you're, if you're not taking responsibility, not listening to the word, not listening to word, what God has for you, you'll begin to get frustrated. You'll get, it's, it's not like you just get up and think, okay, I'm going to be offended today. I'm going to get up and be uh, Frustrated, it's a process, and the process is you're not listening, it starts going into blaming, and eventually you, be, you begin to start putting that on somebody else. You, you keep them as a scapegoat, and the, the Bible commentary talks about that, saying that the scapegoat is basically you're deceived. Now, I want to go back to, if you can go back to that first scripture in James at the beginning. Something kind of interesting that uh, actually Pastor posted this week. 
It says in uh, verse 22, put the word into action. If you think hearing is, is what matters most, you are going to find that you have been deceived. And I'm going to read, this is like a, like a little commentary they have in the voice version. It's pretty cool. God the Father is the giver of all things and is looking for every opportunity to bless us. But many people find, have difficulty trusting and receiving good things. You can scroll up a little bit. Even when those things come from God, the problem is that we not only have trouble trusting God's work in our lives, but we also don't always respond to God's voice. People often hear the scriptures, but don't really listen. People store the truths in their brains, but never put them to use. For James, the only good religion for James, the only good religion is religion lived out every day. I was finding that a lot of this, a lot of these scriptures were tying together. You know, you know, God's His thinking is way above our thinking. But you know, I think if we take the time to uh, pray and really um, ask God and to show us, and we're open to doing that. I think he's really good. I think he'll show us some things. And uh, this was really pretty amazing to me how this thing turned out when they were talking about. Because, again, my wife and I used to always talk about that. And sometimes uh, we would say, like, are you hearing me? Or I remember my mom would say, are you even listening to me? And, I'm, you know, you, we kind of think about that. And we don't really know exactly. Uh, we don't really think about that. We're all, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. But... In reality, if we're not going to do something about it or pay, or pay attention to somebody and try to make that effort to change or make that effort to take responsibility, we're deceiving ourselves. Something kind of amazing, too, the story, I was looking at the story of, um, of Joseph. Actually, if you can bring up uh, Romans 10. And with every problem, there's a remedy. So the remedy is faith and trusting God, like that scripture was saying. In Romans, but not everyone who hears the good news has welcomed it. For Isaiah the prophet said, Lord, who has believed me when I told them, yet faith comes from listening to his good news, the good news about Christ. So again, listening is obeying. I was thinking about the story of Joseph, and um, we all know that Joseph... Uh, was um, thrown in the pit by his brothers. Uh, he was, he, um, he got sold into slavery. He had to go to jail. And uh, I looked kind of up what exactly what he had to do when he went to jail. And, you know, they say like a lot of the jails now are like, you know, the Hilton compared to these jails. And they said those jails back then were like, um, I think they were called like cisterns or it was like a place where they had water used to run in there and they were really short. So in reality, he had to go in there and sit there for years, sitting down, tied up with this musty place, filthy, probably with rats. And, you know, he had to go through a lot. But in the same time, this whole time he went through this process, he never complained. He never blamed anybody. He just trusted God and he believed in God's promises. Eventually, you know, people talk about like all the trauma that he had to go through, but in reality, he thrived. At the very end of this, he thrived because he was the number two man in Egypt. That's what he became. And Egypt at the time was the richest, powerful kingdom in the world. So he could have been number two in the world. So that was pretty amazing. Again, he never complained. He never blamed anybody. He just, and he had a chance, too, to be bitter at the very end when his brothers came back. But he, uh, you know, he accepted, he accepted them, and all his family was with him at the end. I thought it was just a pretty amazing story. But again, he was determined. And, uh, you know, it's really like what we do in the wilderness you know, how are, what are our actions, what are, what's our behavior in the wilderness? Are we going to be uh, bitter, complaining? Are we going to be uh, blaming other people? Or are we just going to trust God and let him walk us through that so we can one day maybe have our breakthrough? 
So some of the notes I took on Joseph, he trusted God for years. Um, I think it was at least 13 years. I've heard more. He endured his trials. He never blamed anyone, and he was given more. Can you pull up Mark 4? So it kind of tells us what can happen, the remedy of this, if we trust God. We trust him. We uh, walk with him, even through the trials, not complaining, and what can happen. Can you pull it? Where's the scripture at? Oh, there it is. When you bring a lamp into the house, do you put it under a box or stuff it under your bed? Or do you sit on top of a table or chest? Those things that are hidden are meant to be revealed. And what is concealed is meant to be brought out where the light can shine. Scroll up a little bit. Thank you. All who have ears to hear, let them listen. So consider carefully the things you're hearing. If you put into use, you'll be given more to wrestle with, much more. Those who have listened will receive more. But those who don't hear will forget even the little they failed to understand. So Joseph, because he listened, he obeyed, he trusted, God gave him a lot more. But if we don't choose to do that, if we choose to go the other way, God can take away what little we have. So to me, this is a very scary thought because this can happen to any of us. It can happen at our jobs. It can happen... Um, in church, or anywhere. But the ones who listen and obey are the ones who are going to get blessed with, blessed by God, given more, and it really starts with trusting God. That's the bottom line. We have to trust God. We have to listen. It may come over very simple, like somebody giving us their opinion or suggestion, but anything that is coming over from God through this altar or through band, to the pastors, it's coming from God. And if, and if we don't pay attention to that, we're actually going to be rejecting God, and we can get stuck, and whatever we have, what little we have, God can take that away. Or we can go the other way, listen, obey, trust God, and he'll give us more and take care of us. Thank you. Amen.